What is happening? Well, a lot is in the NFL. Free agency week, a lot going on all over the league. But in the world of golf, one of the biggest weeks of the year, the Players' Championship, which is in Sawgrass, which if any of you follow the sport on social media, you have seen this course, public course, charges over $900. <laughs> Pretty expensive round of golf. Pebble Beach is actually less than that. But this is typically a fantastic tournament. Historically, they always used to say best field in golf. They're still saying that technically. It is no longer the best field in golf given the live guys. Like you're missing six or seven star high-end players. But regardless, I enjoy this tournament. I'm going to watch this tournament. I'm pretty heavily invested as a gambler already on a Tuesday afternoon in this tournament. So we will talk about Sawgrass. Today, Jay Monahan, the commissioner of golf, spoke. Have some thoughts there, as well as Scotty Scheffler. We'll say he learned how to putt. And if he knows how to putt now, again, which he did a couple years ago, watch out. And then last but not least, just some of my bets and the betting strategy I have for this week slash weekend. But before we dive in to the golfing world, I got to tell you about my friends, my partners, and the official ticketing app of this podcast. I was watching the WCC semifinals last night. Gonzaga was playing USF. And tonight is the championship on Tuesday night, St. Mary's against Gonzaga. And anyone who's ever had the chance, if you have the NCAA tournament, the round of 64 and 32 coming to your area, I would highly recommend going. One, you can gamble now. Two, it's just extremely entertaining. You sit there, drink some beers, watch NCAA basketball all day. It's a very, very fun experience. I've done it a couple times, San Jose and Sacramento back when I lived in California. If you want to do that, download the Game Time app. Use the promo code GOLO, G-O-L-O-W, save $20 off your first purchase. Buy any pair of tickets, pro, college, baseball, uh, hockey, you name it, concerts, comedy shows. Do it now. Download the Game Time app, promo code GO, G-O-L-O-W, save $20 off your first pair of tickets. I don't watch college basketball at all, November through this week. Once this week starts, I watch a lot. And uh, I can't wait for all these championship games in the conference tournament. And then obviously the NCAA tournament, which is just easily one of the better events in America. So promo code go low, download the game time app. I was watching the Patriot documentary, which some episodes I've hated, some I've really liked. And Roger Goodell came into the, the last couple episodes I saw because deflate gate was one of the topics and anyone that's, you know, a lot of people do. It's the biggest sport in America. Roger is not at a press conference or in front of a mic, Mr. Personality. He is not just some guy owning the room in the sense of throwing zingers, interacting with the media in the way that they like. That's not really, I wouldn't call him Bill Belichick on the podium, but he's not exactly, you know, Bill Parcells either. So he can do that though. His league is one of the most successful businesses in this country. They are printing money. He doesn't even actually really need the media. Why? Because he has us, the fans, who watch currently in record numbers. So when he gets in a situation that is not easy to deal with, he kind of just says nothing. And it's pretty boring. And honestly, you kind of know what to expect if you watch him talk of, he's not going to say much. Things are going really well. He doesn't need to. Well, the PGA Tour is currently the opposite of the NFL. It's in shambles. They have lost easily five or six of their star players, most polarizing players, and guys that help move the needle for their sport. So Jay Monahan who is the commissioner, which is currently, you know, th there is peacetime and there is wartime. Well, the golf world is in the middle of a civil war. That involves the Saudis, and that involves the PGA Tour, and that involves the division between his players. Many clearly are not comfortable with these guys coming back to the PGA Tour. Even Rory McIlroy has changed his tune. 
Like, we need to figure out a way to all play together again. And then you have the Jordan Spieths and the Ricky Fowlers, who are kind of like, fuck that. They need to pay for their sins, which to me really angers me, not because they feel the way they feel. Very understandable. We all, our feelings are based off our experience. I, I, I never fault anyone for believing something politically, personally, in a business, if that's what their experience tells them to feel. But when you're in a business, sometimes you have to be able to take a step back. And the healthiest thing for this sport is to figure out a way to get together. Well, I tried to watch Jay Monahan today talk. And I figured out pretty quickly, he's a lot like Roger Goodell. Says nothing. Is not really comfortable up there in front of the press. And I think Roger is dramatically more comfortable than Jay. But Jay honestly feels uncomfortable. That's a problem. And this issue right now, which he'd said nothing, of like, you got to do whatever it takes to figure out a deal with these guys. Nobody cares that you just signed some future agreement with Arthur Blank, uh, with the Boston Red Sox group, the Glazers, all these rich guys that own NFL and NBA teams. We don't give a shit. All I want to do is on a non-major turn on the television and see John Rahm, Dustin Johnson, Bryson DeChambeau, Brooks Kepka, with Jordan Spieth, with Scotty Scheffler, with Will Zalatoris. And right now, that is nowhere close to happening. And that is a problem. And even he said today, when asked about the situation, they still have a lot to work through. And it's pretty clear that some of his players, some of his more famous players, don't want to avoid a deal. And this gets back to Tiger Woods talking about like, yeah, we'll see how this plays out. It's not a lock we're going to do a deal with them. And it just makes me shake my head. Your sport is not strong enough to be splintered. And when things are splintered, you need people in a management situation that know what they're doing, that can see the big picture. And it doesn't feel like Jay can. And it also doesn't feel like Jay any longer has the pull that he needs to have internally within his top players. So when I watched Jay talk, at least as long as I could, it's just so boring. I went, this situation is not getting fixed anytime soon. Now the players are, have never made more money. The problem is it's kind of fake. I mean, it's real money going into their accounts, but it's not real in the sense your business is not generating this. The TV contract you guys just signed, their television ratings are currently down. I say this all the time about the NBA. NBA players have never made more. You see guys sign these 40, 50, 55, 60 million dollar a year contracts. Well, that's because the television contract is a fixed number. Well, they have been getting royally screwed for the last six or seven years with the ratings going into the tank. So when I watch this golfing situation and Jay Monahan, you have this is inevitable where it's going to go. You have to do a deal with Live Golf. And yeah, you never want to do a deal with someone that has way more money than you. Even as you add some of these NFL owners, but these NFL owners are getting involved to make a profit. And you guys simply cannot do that the way currently constructed. It was always going to be difficult the moment Tiger Woods disappeared. And let's face it, in terms of the PGA Tour, he's disappeared. It was exciting when he said in the fall, I plan on playing once a month. That's clearly not happening. I think it's fair to say, best case scenario, he plays the four majors. And more than likely, three of the four of them, he's not even going to make the cut anymore. Which pains me to say, him and Michael Jordan, my favorite athletes of all time. But the draw of Tiger Woods isn't there if he's not around. So you're very dependent on all these other players, which a diehard like myself enjoys. But the average fan doesn't even know the majority of guys outside the top seven or eight players. So... I think Jay and the, the current situation is an utter disaster. There's no way to spin it. And I'm not some doomsday guy, 
But I just know you can't maintain this business without those other guys. And those other guys all get together during the majors. That has nothing to do with the PGA Tour. The PGA Tour does not own the majors. Hell, they kicked those guys out of the Ryder Cup, which the PGA Tour, you know, owns the President Cup, not even the Ryder Cup. So you, you see this situation and you just go, this sucks. It really does. And it's one thing when you get a dynamic leader, right? And you go, this guy's going to figure it out. Steve Jobs came back to Apple in the late 90s, early 2000s, changed the company. Jeff Bezos, it's like, yeah, if he gets involved, it's probably going to be successful. I have no faith in Jay Monahan. I don't know the guy, but I just watch him talk, and I, I watch the results. Because I, I don't base really anything in life off words. Nothing means less to me in business than words. Everything is about action and results. And right now, the results in the current situation sucks. <laughs> There's no way around it. And he just does not feel like a guy dynamic enough to fix this problem. And the other thing is, some of this is out of his control. If I wanted to defend him, his players don't care what we think. And the reason they have the money is us. So if we don't factor in, they got problems. The thrill and excitement of March Mania is here. And DraftKings Sportsbook, one of America's top-rated sportsbook apps, is giving new customers a shot to turn 5 bucks into $150 instantly in bonus bets with any college basketball bet. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code JOHN, J-O-H-N. New customers can bet 5 bucks to get $150 instantly in bonus bets only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code J-O-H-N. The crown is yours. Scotty Scheffler, who is, it, it's hard. I, I would say him and Rom were basically equals, but now I, I don't even get to watch Rom play golf anymore. When Scotty is on, he is the best player in the world. I think we'd all agree to that. One problem that happened last year, which based on all the metrics, was one of the greatest ball striking years. T to green, meaning everything except putting, since peak Tiger Woods. Yet he didn't win a major. Hell, he didn't even win the FedEx. Hovlin did. It almost felt in a weird way, with this all-time great season, that the guy underachieved. Why? Can't putt. As someone who hovers around like a four to six handicap, I can have days where I have, I would say, five, you know, three to five pretty solid birdie looks on a couple par fives, knock a couple irons close on par fours, and if my putter's hot, I can make four. If my putter's off, I won't make one. Sometimes I'll three putt. <laughs> Why? Because most of us are very, very average putters. Now, I believe for the amateur game, you should focus much more on your off the tee game. Hit the fairway. And then the worst you're going to, if you're hitting every fairway, if you're a 10 handicap, you'll be in the mid 80s. If you're a four handicap, you'll be in the high 70s. If you're in the trees nonstop, I don't care if you're a great putter. It's going to be a long day. But for these pros, which are peppering greens, putting is very, very important. And Scotty Scheffler went on a stretch where it was like, this is insane how bad of a putter he was. And even Rory McIlroy said a couple weeks ago, like, yeah, maybe he should change the putter. And I think like a lot of humans, whether it's your parents, whether it's your wife, whether it's people, your business partners or people you work for, when you're told something and you're really good at something to change, your first natural reaction, I'm like this, is no. Even if in the back of your head, you're like, yeah, it's not a terrible idea. And I wonder if at first he's like, yeah, I'm not changing to change, even if I'm a disaster. And eventually you get to a point of no return. You're like, what do I have to lose? Miss more putts? He changed his putter. And by the end of Bay Hill, it was it looked like Tiger Woods. It was not a fair fight. He kicked everybody's ass. I saw the Shane Lowry interview at the end of the tournament. And he's like, honestly, I, I played pretty incredible this week. And then they asked him, like, 
what could you have done against Scotty Scheffler? And he was essentially speechless. He's like, I, yeah, I, I don't know. Because there's nothing you could do. And that's what Tiger Woods used to do. Because I'll never forget Hunter Mahan telling me, people don't understand how good Tiger Woods was in his peak. He was literally the best at everything. The only thing he wasn't elite at was accuracy off the tee. But when he had to, he wasn't spraying it all over. He was the longest. He was the best iron player. He was the best guy around the greens. And no one made more putts when they had to, you could argue in the history of golf, than Tiger Woods. Even Jack Nicholas, historically not a great chipper of the ball. Tiger, in his prime, was elite with a fucking wedge in his hand. Scotty Scheffler, same thing. All-time great iron player, great around the green. But if you're going to miss putts, I don't care how good you are. Honestly, it was always a sneaky downfall. Phil Mickelson used to miss a lot of putts he should have made. For as great as his career was, maybe he's got four or five more wins and a couple more majors if he was just a better putter. He was very streaky. Scotty Scheffler last week was just a legit putter. And if he's going to putt like that, like he did a couple years ago, he's going to win five or six times this year. And he should win multiple majors. Now, am I going to put money on him to win this week? I'm not, just because winning back-to-back weeks is very, very difficult. But he's also being treated like Tiger Woods. He's almost 5-1 to one to win the players. I remember, you know, throughout the last, since I've been betting on golf the last four or five years, when a guy gets really hot and is playing really well, a Dustin Johnson, a Rory McIlroy, a John Rahm, they can get to that, like, 8-9 range. You start getting down to like approaching four to one, you're in a different stratosphere. And I enjoy watching them. And it's just fun to watch a guy like his feet are all kind of over the place. It doesn't look as natural and smooth as, say, Rory. It's not just like as consistent when he's on as John Rahm. It's actually a little bit more of a roller coaster in an elite way. And I find Scotty, when he's on, just a very fun, he's honestly got a little Phil Mickelson to him, just doing all sorts of crazy shit. Uh, working the ball both ways, feet falling all over the place. But you look up at the end, you're like, God, he's kicking everyone's butt. And that's what he did last week on, I, I ran in the other day to Tony Fina at TPC. He decided not to play Bay Hill. It was an elevated event. And he's like, yeah, I just, I don't like the course. And I asked him, he's like, that course is brutal. It's like a U.S. Open. He thought hole six is like one of the harder holes on tour. He's like, every single shot, he's like, you you take a par, it's not that long of a par five. But he's like, both your drive and then obviously your approach shot, you're just, all you see is water. And it's just, it's tough. They grow out the rough, just like a U.S. Open. It's not fun. I mean, historically, people hate that course. They avoid it like the plague. If it wasn't for Tiger winning it like 25 times, I don't even know if we'd talk about it like we do. Now, obviously, it's associated with Arnold Palmer, who I was thinking about the other day because I had the Golf Channel on in the background and they were showing some stuff about Arnie. If I could play 18 holes with one guy, like in their 40s or 50s, right? They could still play. I, I don't need them to be like in the peak of their powers. But just to hear stories from, Arnold Palmer would probably be a pretty incredible human being. I mean, seriously. All-time great businessman, all-time great showman, all-time great player. Uh, has, you could argue, one of my favorite drinks of all time, the Arnold Palmer. If you pour a little Tito's, make it the John Daly. That's really, really hard to beat. But Scotty Scheffler made that made that course look like Tiger Woods used to. And if that's the way the guy's going to putt, I would put his over-under at majors at like one and a half. To me, he feels like a lock to win a major. And honestly, he feels like a lock to be in them all. eBay Motors is here for the ride. You know, the first car I ever got, I was 16 years old. And my grandpa gave me a ride. And like any young lad who got a car that, let's face it, would not have been my first choice, I had to touch it up a little bit. And we tinted out the windows. We added a big subwoofer to the back. And you could hear me from miles away coming home. My my parents sure loved me for that one. So did my neighbors. 
But I think the key to any young person getting a car is to personalize a little bit because you're probably not going to get your dream car. And as you get older, you know, you kind of become a car person or you don't. But you definitely have preferences, right? Some of us like bigger cars. I know I do. I've only had big cars, SUVs. And uh, there are certain non-negotiables. I just like, I like three rows of seats. Now, ideally, I don't have kids right now, so I take out that third row of seat and I like a big... You know, I, I like a lot of trunk room. Some people, you know, don't like SUVs, like smaller cars. I, I've never been that big since my high school car of tinting the windows. I don't care if you see me or not, but I, I know some people, like, the first thing they do is tint the windows. It's crazy. The older you get, you know, I, I had to have the subwoofers. I, I The subwoofer, I couldn't listen to music for five minutes with the subwoofer like I did when I was younger. But th there is something very, very special about that first car. I don't care how many cars you get since, how much money you make to get sweeter cars. You never quite forget that first ride and uh, some of the memorable moments that you had in it in your high school years. So with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you can make sure your ride stays running smoothly. Brake kits, LED headlights, roof rack bumpers, whatever your baby needs ebay motors has it and with ebay guaranteed fit it's guaranteed to fit your ride the first time every time or your money back plus at these prices you're burning rubber not cash keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com eligible items only exclusions apply bets for this weekend uh i would say I wouldn't say I have an uncomfortable amount of money wagered on the players, but it's definitely not amount of money that I'm not. I, I, I'm somewhere in the middle of comfortable and uncomfortable. It's a lot. And one strategy I did last week and I plan on doing again is placing a lot of money. Like instead of just doing, I'll just give you an example. If I'm going to bet on a winner for the, just on a random tournament, the most I'll put usually is like 100, 150. Because one thing I've learned, it's very, very hard to hit. Now, once you hit them, it kind of keeps you coming back. But you're not going to make money and be successful doing that very often. So instead of just putting 50 or or $100 on a guy, 30, 40 to 1, I put a lot of money on guys to finish in the top 20. And you can get odds on like Hideki Matsuyama you can get him plus 170. You could get Sahith Tagala, almost three to one to finish in the top 20. Now, this is a ball strikers course. Several years ago, one of, I would say I've probably hit five or six winners over the last three years. One of the guys that I hit as a winner was Justin Thomas, who won this tournament. I think I had $100 on him, won a couple grand. And he's not the greatest putter. But if you are a great ball striker, I like your chances. And Hideki is playing very, very well. Same thing with the Gala. Another guy who's a little bit of a longer odds guy, who ironically I think is Arnold Palmer's grandson, is Eric Cole. Last year he was like a 34-year-old rookie on the PGA Tour. He's a really good player. Now, I had a top 20 on him last week. He finished 21st. So it's not like... You're a lock to hit the bet, even if you're on the right guy. It's difficult. But the top 20, the one thing I've learned with the top 20s, gives you a lot of leeway, especially if you have some horses. And Tagala and Hideki, I feel really good about. Now, one strategy that I claim not to do that I am going to do this week because I won a bunch of money last week and I just kind of rolled some over right away was on Zalatoris to win this tournament. And a couple days ago, he was 25 to 1. That's what I got him at. Well, there's some, you know, he's had back injuries in the past. I, I saw this injury report that someone put out that I, I don't know if his back flared up. His odds are now 35 to 1. Don't love that. But Will Zalatoris healthy, the guy we've seen this year? To me, I, I like him to compete and have a very, very good chance to win this tournament. Now, the injury, I don't know. That, that, that definitely makes me nervous. But I, I got large bets on Eric Cole, Thagala, Hideki Matsuyama. 
Another guy I like, as long as his odds are floating 35 to 40 to 1, any PGA Tour event is Ludwig. Because I was like, ah, oh, Ludwig's playing kind of bad. Then I looked. His week in Pebble, he easily could have won. The Sunday got rained out. He would have been playing with Wyndham Clark. At Riviera, he was pretty damn good. And even last week, I'm like, oh, God, he finished toward the end. Finished tied for 25th. So it's not like he's uncomfortable in Florida grass. And clearly, from a talent standpoint, as an iron player, which this course sure feels like good iron players have a lot of success here, uh, I like his chances. And you get him, I, I sprinkled a little on 35 to 1, but as a top 10, as a top 20, to me, Ludwig is a pretty, pretty interesting bet. And overall, it's just sad that, you know, the Cam Smiths, the Roms, the DJs, the Kepkas aren't going to be in this tournament. But I don't know how long we can keep beating a dead horse. That, as we saw with Jay today, is not happening anytime soon. 